Hi everyone, welcome back to High School Science 101 and first and foremost, thank you so much to all of you for all of your support. We've just hit 10,000 subscribers and I would never have guessed three years ago when I started this channel that I would ever get anywhere close to that. As you know, I started this channel just for my own students and to see it spread around the world and help so many people in different schools all around the world is just incredible. And especially now in COVID-19 with the school lockdown, um, you know, to have students and teachers telling me how much my lessons are helping them through this time is just really rewarding and I'm so grateful that my lessons are helping so many of you. Today I've got a bit of a bonus video for you. Uh, I'm going to do a desk tour of my science desk behind me. I've accumulated some really interesting science stuff over the last few years and I've featured some of them in my past videos so you might recognize some of them. But uh, there's some pretty cool stuff here that I'm going to show you and I do have some other videos in the pipeline but I'm doing my PhD at the same time as well. So it's hard to balance them both at the moment, but rest assured I do have some more videos in the pipeline. But for now, let's take a tour of this desk behind me and let's get started. Okay, so here is my desk, my science desk. I use it for filming some of my videos and obviously, as you can see, for storing some of the things that I've used in some of my videos. So let's go through. Here I've got a toy robotic arm that I picked up recently from an antique shop. It's from the 60s or 70s and I just really like robotics. I built a robotic arm myself for a university project back in the day and I saw this and I just thought I had to pick it up. I've been restoring it, and as you can see, it needs a bit more restoration because some of the things don't work on it. But that's just something cool that I picked up. Here we have a Newton's Cradle, which most of you have seen before. It demonstrates uh, Newton's laws of motion, particularly the conservation of momentum, which states that the amount of momentum that these balls have before the collision is equal to the momentum after the collision. But of course, some energy is lost along the way due to friction and air resistance and so on. But um, there we go. Newton's Cradle, very, very cool. And we have a model steam engine, which I've shown you in one of the videos before. It still works, it works really well. You just put the water in here. Uh, you light a little fire under here using some ethanol or some sort of fuel. And then that boils the water, creates steam and generates a bit of power. And over here we have a planimeter. And basically with this, you can trace the outline of two dimensional shapes. So for example, lakes on a map, and it will convert that into um, an area in square meters. So very, very useful and very old too. We have here a Capsella model. And I'm gonna talk about Capsella a little bit later on, but Capsella is incredible, really good kids toy um, and adult toy as well. Uh, really enjoy building things with that. Here we have just a magnetic building kit, uh, which is just really fun to play with. Uh, on a rainy day, you can just build unique models using these magnetic uh, balls and, and sticks. Here we have these ping pong balls. And on the side of them, they say Brain Candy. And Brain Candy is a um, live show that Adam Savage and Michael Stevens did when they came to Melbourne. Really enjoyed it. I got to meet them and they're just really nice guys. And that was just a really cool show. So uh, I've got these ping pong balls that were shot out of a cannon, I think. I was sitting in the front row. So I managed to get a lot of these. I filled up my whole bag full of them. So uh, they're pretty cool. Down here, we have a little um, air powered rocket. I don't really use it very often, but it's just a cool display piece. We have here a microscope, which of course is a staple of any science desk. We have here, and I've shown you this before, this is a model of a rotary engine or a Wankel engine. Uh, Mazda are pretty famous for using these in their RX cars. So the RX threes, fours, sevens, and eights. It's just a really cool design for an engine and I personally really like it. So I've got that there on display. I've got a tripod. Over here, we've got some ferrofluid in a jar and it used to be black. Now it's, I can't really see it, but it's more of a brownie color because it's made of iron, that little uh, blob in there. And it's uh, oxidized and corroded over time. And it's basically formed this rust, which uh, isn't really good. But I mean, this is a few years old now. 
and I think it still works. So it's still magnetic and you can just interact with it with this uh, little magnetic piece here and you can have a bit of fun with it. It doesn't flow as well as it used to, but I mean, this is a few years old now, so it's pretty much inevitable that it was going to rust anyway. We have some test tubes here. We have the world's smallest solar powered car. And I demonstrated that in the very first sciencey stuff video. We have here at the back a music box. Let me just get this out. And again, I've shown you this in one of the sciencey stuff videos as well. This is something that I got from an exhibition in Seattle. When I went to Seattle, um, there was a, um, an exhibition of old school music instruments and just music in general. Uh, for example, they had Jimi Hendrix's guitars there. And in the gift shop, I had to get myself one of these, which plays Let It Be. Over here we have some bismuth, and bismuth is the 83rd element of the periodic table, and it forms these really cool shapes when you extract it out of uh, liquid bismuth. So you melt it down, um, and so this would have been the top of the liquid, and they've gotten some tongs, grabbed this part, extracted it from the molten bismuth, and it forms these really cool shapes, and it forms that rainbow color because of the oxidation, because of the reaction with oxygen in the air. So bismuth, very cool. At the back here, we have some valves from old radios and televisions. We have our puzzle boxes over here. And I did a video looking at puzzle boxes and how they work. We have, for example, this one here, this is a Japanese one. Uh, and you basically have to figure out how to open them. And each of them has very unique uh, mechanisms to allow you to open them. And you have to figure out what that mechanism is. Down here, we have my collection of organisms. Uh, we have a little beetle here, possibly a, a rhino beetle or a dung beetle. We have the life cycle of a silkworm. We have a scorpion. There's a spider. There's, and my favorite, a Japanese house bat. So all of these were living things. They're just preserved in this uh, acrylic or perspex, same thing. So I'm starting a bit of a collection of those and they're really fun to bring into my, my classes. My students love looking at those. And speaking of things in perspex, we have the whole periodic table. We have samples of all of the elements or most of the elements anyway. You can't use the radioactive ones, for example but we've got most of the elements of the periodic table right here in my hand. And we have this piece of sandstone, which is uh, from Arizona, and it was formed about 180 million years ago. So I saw that and I just thought I had to have that. Looking up at this top shelf here, I have this model car that I made. I think it was around grade six for a project or an assignment. Uh, basically, you wind up this propeller and it charges up the elastic potential energy inside this rubber band, uh, which is very close to snapping. And that would create some thrust and move the car forward. I don't think it'll work at the moment though, because as I said, this rubber band is getting very, very brittle because this is like, what, 20 years old now. And the wheels are in pretty poor condition too. But you know, one day I might fix it up and show you guys how that works. And here we have Capsella, and Capsella is amazing. I don't think you can get it anymore, but I built a lot of things out of this particular kit here as a kid. This is the aquatic kit. It comes with all of these different modules, uh, one of them containing the motor, and then the other you know, has a, a bit where you can attach a propeller. And you can have these buoys or flotation devices here, and you can just build a whole range of different types of boats and uh, aquatic vehicles out of this particular set. So lots of hours spent playing with that as a kid. And then in an antique shop recently, I found this guy, which is um, a land-based one. And I remember seeing this as a kid. I never had it myself, but you know, when I see Capsella kits these days, I just have to go and get one because they're very collectible um, and they just bring back a lot of nostalgia. And at the top here, we have a limited edition science Lego set. And it's not only a really cool set because it's got a, a little lab and 
uh, a T-Rex skeleton and an observatory, but it's a women in science Lego set. And I think anything that promotes girls choosing careers in science, which is, you know, stereotypically such a male dominated field, is a really positive step forward and something that we really need to celebrate and promote. So I saw that and I just thought I had to have that on display somewhere. All right, so I hope you found that interesting. Uh, as I said, that was just a bonus video because I do have some more videos on the way. But as I said, I'm finishing off my PhD at the same time as well. So um, rest assured, there are some more videos on the way. Thanks again for all of your support and thanks for watching.